AJ left because he wanted to go to the liquor store. Mason and Sean are here. Well, she says they're here, but, oh, I see someone coming up. Okay, we gotta go get her. AJ's back. Uh, Hi. Hey. Uh, Mason and Sean are here, so I'm gonna go oh, cool. get them. Hi! I'm Sean. It's, I'm Megan. It's nice to finally meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay. Okay. What is happening here? Give me, um, give me a scoop. Well, okay. I'm going to turn this off so we can like okay. catch up and stuff. Hi, Sean. Hello. Um, so I'm just going to ask you a few questions and it's going to be like super casual. So don't worry if anyone else has anything to like say or anything like that. Don't be afraid to like jump in. Like it's not like super formal. So, Okay. Would you say that you are a skeptic or a believer when it comes to paranormal stuff? Definite believer. Why do you say that? I've uh, grown up with experiences from kids. I've grown up around a lot of people who are into it as well, but I've also seen my evidence here and there. I mean, whether people want to believe it or not is up to them, but... Yeah, absolutely. I feel, yeah, I feel like I've seen my own proof of it i feel like it's just something you have to kind of go out and experience yourself yeah um do you want to like maybe elaborate on one experience that you've had um so the one thing i usually always show my friends especially non-believers or something is uh some of my grandparents my grandparents house in Mulverde. uh they own it and only had one owner before them. He built the house, but, you know, he lived in it and died in it. And uh, apparently, you know, talking to my grandfather about him, he was just like a hard, he built some of the houses in the whole neighborhood, actually. He was just like blue collar, you know, hard working dude. And sometimes in the middle of the night, I'd hear these weird cowboy boots walking around kind of like on the hardwood floor. Mm -hmm. Middle of the night, so, I, you know, just me and my 80 year old grandparents, I know it's not them moving around. Right. Uh, my mom came over some point i think it was my sophomore year of high school and on some rocks outside in front of my grandparents deck she started taking pictures and in one of them i could zoom in and you could see my two legs and my two like two pairs of black tennis shoes like this mm -hmm. and then you would see just two other legs a little bit forward from mine and two pairs of cowboy boots and at that time i hardly wore cowboy boots especially the one pair that i did have i don't hardly ever wear them so I knew it wasn't me. And this and, is a picture yeah. that was taken. That's I've seen it. that's fucking crazy. Yeah. I put that on my PlayStation now, so that way I can like zoom in on on my TV. I can send it to you later. I've shown. Oh it yeah, I would love that. Yeah. And it's pretty interesting, but yeah, that's the one thing I would say. I could show it to mm -hmm. other people, at least give them an insight on it. But that's one experience I can say. You know, what made me believe definitely. Having lived in this area, as long as you have. Is there anywhere that you would recommend that AJ and I go to over these next couple of days that might be like haunted or there's known spirits or um, something like that? Well, I think it's all depends on like, like I said, you know, history of places. Um, from some experiences of my own, I've known very like secluded places and even kind of like how we were talking about earlier places with water, I've known mm -hmm. usually play into a factor and places I've had experiences like Green and New Braunfels with the river that flows through there mm -hmm. uh, further out in Seguin uh, not the Black Swan uh, the Victoria Inn or somewhere out in Seguin that's haunted um, and out here my mom likes to call something when, <laughs> I can't remember the full story why she calls it the Devil's Triangle that connects Kerrville, Bandera and Medina and okay so much my mom just doesn't really like especially medina she hates that area and i hate it too i just remember when i was out there as a kid we were staying at my friend uh my aunt Rhonda's place and it was just me and her kid my niece and we we're playing like game boy pokemon games mm -hmm. i was probably like 10 she's seven there's this glass coaster sitting on a shelf that's just about a foot below the roof and there was like shelves that went along the whole little cabin or whatever mm -hmm. that we're in and I could see the light reflect off of it, and I kind of just glanced up, and we both saw it levitating, and we were both kind of just sitting there puzzled, like, is it just, is it really levitating, or is it sitting weird, and I'm stupid? 
and then it shot directly at us at the table, shattered, and actually cut her leg open, and some of it got stuck in my leg, not deep, I, you know, got it pulled right out, but we immediately scram, or screamed for my mom and Rhonda, and my mom didn't have a good experience, or feeling from that point on, later that night, there was like some weird little Indian doll that my mom didn't like at all, and mm -hmm. I guess she threw somewhere out of the house, woke up the next morning, it was on the kitchen floor, back in the house, and That's we didn't crazy. have any dogs or anything with us to like bring it back in or anything. Um, and then I was going with my Aunt Rhonda, just her and her friend, not my mom, to go check out a place she was looking at in Medina, a new place, mm -hmm. and it was like a big home, two-story, you know. Uh, the side of the house had four windows on top, four on the bottom, but all the blinds were open, so you could see perfectly into the house, see mm -hmm. what it looked like, and we're walking around with the, her friend, my aunt, and the homeowner just going around looking at it. I kind of felt weird from the moment I got there. It was just really secluded out in the woods. Like, something really didn't feel right the moment I got there. And it kind of looks like a plantation home, almost. Like, it's a really old-style-looking oh, home. Definitely not what I expected. But uh, I started walking around by myself, and I thought I started hearing, like, footsteps or something. Because it was just me. Uh, Rhonda and everyone else were looking at, like, the workshops and stuff for her husband, talking about how much he loved it. I was just kind of walking off doing my own thing, and I remember hearing like what I thought were footsteps, but I brushed it off because I couldn't really, you know, prove it myself, so I wasn't going to go about and run and go tell her something's going on. But I noticed as we left, I felt something weird, and I looked behind, uh, like through the back windshield as we were leaving in the car, and up in the top windows, uh, I saw it look like a little figure, mm. of, like a like little girl yeah and I told Rhonda to stop the car like I turned around and told her to stop the car and we turned around again and when I told her to look that window was the only one with its blinds all the way down and mm -hmm. I didn't go upstairs I didn't even go upstairs at all actually and I didn't move the blinds none of the blinds were down right they were all placed up so you could see it and all of a sudden those were down and it had to have been a fraction of a second because I yelled stop she slammed the brakes and we turned around and they were down that's crazy yeah and we went back and I started checking it out, but we didn't see anything there, and we just felt weird. I left with my mom, and I think my mom had a couple experiences herself there that I was not awake for. I just didn't remember mm -hmm. the full story about it, so I can't tell you everything about that. But from then on, we just never went back to any of that area of Medina. Um, I think I'm, I don't have any more questions, but if you like have anything you want to add or anything, feel well, free. You know, I mean... I could tell stories for days, but like I said, it's something you, if, you know, to any skeptics out there or anything like that, it's just something you really got to research. Be open-minded, look into it, you know, don't close mind everything off like everyone else does in society with everything in the world. Yeah, for sure. If you're open-minded to it, give it a chance, put yourself in the right setting, and I mean, sometimes those aren't good places, you know, you can go to somewhere like a battlefield like Gettysburg and explore shit, or you can go to somewhere like an insane asylum. Sometimes it's not comfortable, but if you want to go out and experience that stuff, it's the type of stuff you have to be ready for, yeah. or go out, get ready to experience. But I don't think you'll, for any skeptics-wise, I don't think they'd believe from any stories. It's just something they have to go try themselves. Absolutely. So there's a <clears throat> there's a place in uh, San Marcos that was a um, it was a asylum and they turned it into a college dorm. Oh, it was like a frat uh, house. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> me and my brother went there one time, and uh, it was they they had to close it down because some pledge got hazed to death yeah um like it got thrown off the top of the the roof or whatever and so they had to close it down and so we went in there in the middle of the night and there was like floodlights that are motion sensitive because they don't want people going in there so yeah. we had to like evade the floodlights and then like it was just really creepy it was really creepy in there but it's not structurally sound so uh, okay. i wish we could go back there but yeah it's such a cool place to go Okay. Hi, Mason. Hi, Mia. Um, so, just like before, I'm going to ask you some questions. Gotcha. And it's super casual. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, same question. Would you consider yourself a skeptic or a believer? Um, definitely, I think 
honestly, I I think I'm in the middle right now. Okay. If that makes sense, I'm not like like I know there is things out there, um, and I've seen them, um, but I'm trying to figure out what they are, if that makes sense. Yeah. And yeah. what they are to me, you know. Yeah. Um, I believe that I've seen some like ghosts of people who have passed on, um, but I've always kind of. I've just grew. I've just grown up knowing that mm-hmm. there's a middle ground, um, so that's. I mean, I. I guess I was just kind of raised into a family that it was always middle. Ground. Like you are always in between, uh, whether you believed, whether you were a skeptic. You know, mm-hmm. um, because and then we never talked about it. Um, we knew there was things that were around, um, that were in plain sight that everyone saw. We just never talked about it. Mm-hmm. We all knew it was there. You know. Um, But I think I'm definitely a believer as of, like, today, like, right now, you know, in the last few weeks, um, more of a believer because just some things have happened, and, um, especially being with Sean, um, he does bring home things, Mm -hmm. uh, they're not, like, crazy, you know, but it's, like, very, it's still weird to me sometimes, like, you know how you were saying, you know, whether... Like, sometimes it's weird. It's, well, it, it's, it, it's, at first it's weird, and then, um, it doesn't get weird. It's not weird anymore. Mm-hmm. It's at the point where it's not gonna get weird. It's not weird anymore. Right. Um, but at first, when we first got together, super weird, and it freaked me out. Um, and then, I guess, within the last eight months, I have just been trying to figure out what my place is and everything else that goes on past the physical. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm just I'm the kind of person who needs tangible evidence mm-hmm. and I have yet to get that tangible evidence other than my own eyes you know mm-hmm. I want like a picture or something you know so uh, I've been trying to do that just trying to get physical proof you know to I don't know I guess I'm just trying to convince myself you know because I know <laughs> it is but there's that part of me that denies it so hard mm-hmm. yeah absolutely you know but there's a there's a part of me growing every single day that is like no, this is, this is the real shit. This is real life. And this happens. People accept it or they don't. Yeah. What is the most recent, <laughs> what's, the, what's the most recent experience that you've had that you're comfortable sharing? Okay. Um, so kind of like a little bit of a long story, but I'll try and dump, uh, kind of trim it down. Um, so I have this friend And, well, I have run into him through work and stuff like that. And so he, I started working and he has, the first time he met me, he told me that, um, that I was a witch, right? Mm -hmm. Quote, unquote, whatever. Right. And I was like, okay, you're weird. That's all. I'm just going to mind my own business. Mm -hmm. Right. And it really, really got me thinking. I made him think that I thought he was weird. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, "Eh, I don't really know what you're talking about. Right? But I knew what he was talking about. I just didn't want everyone else to know that I knew. Mm -hmm. So, as, so since I've, um, been hanging out with him and working with him, um, the past three months, he has been doing tarot cards on me. Mm -hmm. Um, because he says they work best with, quote, unquote, a witch. Right? So, I was like, okay, never done them. Whatever. Right? Well, um, he did the first set on me in my car. Um, and I was like, okay, whatever. Well, he, it was, it was, it was a really good hand. It was, things were going to happen in my life and, um, things were going to change, right? Um, and so that was like two months ago. Um, and... It, it wasn't something big and significant, but it was significant to me to where when things happened, I knew exactly what was happening. Like, I knew exactly where this was coming from because I was already warned, mm-hmm. right? So, he has done three sets of cards on me. Each and every single one of them has been true. The second deck that he did on me was um, really, really apparent. Um, there was one card in particular, not sh- or it's called the tower. Mm-hmm. And it was where a man was falling out of this tower. He's going to die. Yeah. Um, and I just like, 
was thinking about it and I went home and I talked to Sean and I said I we were out at the pond you know just relaxing chilling and I kept having this feeling I said it's going to be you it's going to be you Sean I can feel it I know it you know and around this time I'm starting to see like this dark figure in my mom's house which is right across the street like right across the pool from our house right Mm -hmm. I'm seeing this thing watching me from this window I'm talking a huge dark figure and I've never seen something like that that scared me like I've seen it Mm -hmm. I saw it so I start opening up to my mom and at this time I already told Sean I feel like it's gonna be you I feel like it's gonna be you I start opening up to my mom my mom has been saying you know there's I keep saying my mom's kind of like skeptic right Mm -hmm. So she's like, I've been seeing something past my glasses on the side. She's like, but I feel like it's just me. And I was like, okay, hold on, let me have a talk. (laughs) It's not just you. And stop thinking that you're not seeing that. I told her, stop thinking that. For real, stop. And she was like, okay, whatever, right? So a couple days back, she's like, I still see it. Well, I'm still seeing this thing in the window. And so the tower card comes into play and um Sean lost his job out of the blue nothing like just out of the blue and I he got in the car that day and I said I knew it was going to be you I told you I told you and you didn't believe me and it wasn't that someone was going to die it was that something something was going to happen that was really really unexpected and that's what he told that's what my friend told me and um so i'm still seeing this really big thing in the window and me and sean are feeling this thing outside of the lights which is really weird past where the porch lights couldn't reach anymore kind of thing and it sounds really scary and weird but that's exactly what it feels like um you know it's there but you can't see it and um and keep in mind there's little carports and stuff like that sorry to interrupt but Little yeah. things that light up all over her property and you could just randomly glance over and you'll see something walk in uh-huh. front of those lights because you can't see the lights on anymore for a split second and then they're back there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's not the part of the field where her cows live. Or it's like so there the should house. be nothing moving back there. It's like civilization at the house. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so I go talk to my friend again and I'm like, I tell him exactly what I'm seeing. I'm opening up this point because I'm like, I don't know what to do. There's so many things happening that aren't weird anymore. They're happening too often, but they're still weird to me. Mm-hmm. He's one of those people that tells me it's not weird. It's not weird. Stop saying it's weird. It's not weird. Right? I'm like, okay. Mm-hmm. And um, so the blood moon happened. That picture I showed you. Sorry about that. Some battery issues. So go ahead. Do you remember where you, where yeah. you were? Okay. Okay. So I'm still seeing this like big thing in the window. So I talked to my friend. I tell him exactly what happened. I just open up to him because I don't know what to do. I'm just kind of like, I'm at a loss, and you're telling me I can do something about this, so tell me how to do it. So he tells me to, like, put my fingernails and my spit and, like, all of my hair in this box, right? Well, I ended up not doing that because that night after I talked to him, he said, don't, you don't have to do anything with the box if, um, like, you don't have to try and get rid of it if you don't see it after today. Because if you don't see it after today, it was my fault. Um, And I said, "Uh, okay. And he said, I sent someone to protect you because I knew you were going through a lot of things and maybe it's not happening the way I want it to. He didn't really elaborate. Mm -hmm. And um, so I didn't make him elaborate. I just said, okay. Went home, told Sean, um, because he tells me when he feels things too and we always feel the same. We always agree. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I tell him what's going on. I say, you know, if you see it, let me know because he's seen it. And... um, um, so that night came home and the air literally was still heavy, but it was like one big piece was taken out of it. It was a little bit lighter. And I told Sean, we're walking by the pool. I'm like, I don't feel it. I immediately don't feel it. Cause I would come home in a bad mood and start fighting and just like, I, I could not help it. Mm-hmm. 30 minutes after I get home, I would get all riled up for no reason and I would get so mad. And then after that I was fine. Um, but it was only when I would go home. And so, basically, I haven't seen that thing since then. Mm -hmm. And I know that, like, that recent stuff only happened, what, a week or two ago? So, that's, like, super fresh. And seeing that thing with my own eyes in my mom's house looking at me across the pool, I was like, 
it almost looked like my stepdad turned around, but it wasn't. Mm-hmm. It wasn't him because he was sitting in the, um, he was sitting on the couch right there. I looked and I was like, what the hell, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's just like things like that. Like, um, we found earrings in the, in the store that, um, I'll lock up the store and I'll come back and there will be earrings, um, knocked off of the shelves. Like clearly someone like, what, you know, um, just like really crazy stuff, you know? Yeah. And, um, I know, I, I, I know that, um, this stuff is real, but like I said, I'm just trying to figure out what, how I am involved with all mm-hmm. these things that are happening to me because if they're not, if they wouldn't be happening to me if the, somehow me and that other side don't cross paths. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Um, and I think those things, that answer comes in time. Mm-hmm. And you'll find it. Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. Do you have any more questions? I don't think so. Is there anything you want to say? No. I think that just, um, I mean... I, I, I think everyone ha- like Sean said to me the other day everyone can do this it's just a fact of um, are you going to accept that there's something beyond what you can see 